Yes, welcome to another episode of Free Smoke, mm-hmm. episode three. I am your host, Millie Wayne. I'm here with my co-host. People them's champ, you know, never sell pro came. The people them gave you that name, Big Jabber Jones from the South Side. And we are on the best podcast in the world, Free Smoke. Free, free smoke, smoke, Free, free smoke. smoke. Yeah. And people, what I would like you to do before you even start this, i got a legendary guest today, but before I even start, I'd like you to um, like, subscribe and share, you know what I'm saying, the YouTube channel. And also, we got merch as well. Free smoke merch. We got ashtrays. We got lighters. We got cups. We got cups, hoodies, t-shirts. As you can see, I'm wearing. I ain't got the hoodie on now, but we got all that type of good stuff. So yeah, support it. Freesmoke.com. That's what free it smoke, is. Free smoke. Free and smoke. And today, yeah, the legendary guest in the building is. I go by the name of Tasmanians. Oh, None oh, other than. Jesus. I'm gonna let him introduce yeah. himself. <laughs> Big up, man. I'm here. Free smoke. My name's T A Z. This is Kiki Riches. We're here, man. We're just here talking to Free Smoke. Finally. 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 Man, finally. Big up Kiki as well in the building. Big up Kiki Thank as well. Big up. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Yo, Taz, so me, I like to go like from the beginning, innit? So like, <laughs> yeah. What's your like origin? I was born in Jamaica. You was born in Jamaica? Yeah. Okay. Um, St. Thomas Yellis. Basically kind of the same place where Popcorn's born. Okay, that's nice. So yeah, it's, nice. It's, 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 yeah. I've never been Jamaica, do you know that? Never. What? Yeah, never. That's <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Now yeah. people, yeah, now people cuss me about that. I've you never, I've up, never man. been Jamaica, and that's where my people's from, isn't it? So I always get cussed for that one there. But yeah, um, so where did you grow up? So I grew up between uh, Jamaica, England, and s- done some in Miami. But, you know, I would say most of my time has been in England. So you so. actually, like, grew up in Jamaica, school and that? Yeah, I went to school. What age of school? Um, okay, so funny thing is I came to England when I was three. Yeah. Then went back about six. Okay. Then w- <laughs> it's just been like a, a back and forth. And then um, stayed there for a long time. And then came back about 14 yeah. And came to Lillian Bailey's. Okay. Yeah, but I went primary school here as well. I went... That's my school, Lillian Bailey's. Yeah, I done my last year in that yeah, school there, man. So, yeah. Big up everyone that went Lillian Bailey's. And man. Tennyson's okay. I went to as well. Oh, you went to that boys' school as well? Yeah, yeah, Tennyson's. I went big to all Tennyson's, the... big yeah. up. Come on. So, how was school for you, though? School for me was crazy, man. I mean, coming from Jamaica, mm. I was a kind of a goody two-shoes. So, it was like, yo... Remember, my stepmother's a head of police in Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, like, like, like wow. high up there in yeah, police. Cr- so your education was on point. You, yeah, you, you were smart. Because I've had Jamaican <laughs> friends in school and they were kind of smarter than Just, us English yeah, ones. Yeah. Like, academically, they were better than us, yeah. definitely. So you was like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, not so much. I tried, like, tried... I kind of was just bought in both sides because before that I went to private school in okay. England, John okay. Lafra. Never heard of it. But John Lafra <laughs> was a seven-day Adventist school in um, yeah. Tottenham. Okay. In fact, a few artists went there. I swear Getz went there. Yeah. I swear Sincere went there. A couple okay. of people went must there. Be, that's okay. a big school then. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that came from my educational roots. And then coming from Jamaica, obviously I was well educated like had to you know be in certain time mm. had to do the morning duties my dad was really strict my dad's a farmer my stepmother was a um a, a kind of head of police so she was up there how, in the police how was that how was that like what well, you see your stepmother yeah so how was that though she was she was really strict man um seeing her maneuver well jamaican police are not like british police innit? they're mm. very different mm. so she always had a gun and her people was coming to the house with guns <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. You know what police are like? They're yeah. not like English police. Yeah. They were very. You, you can bribe those police. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're very. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. allegedly. Yeah. allegedly yeah. You can bribe those police. Yeah. They're very different. So, you know, growing up around that, they were very bossy. When the police used to come to my house, yeah. some of them used to go, yeah, man, we just shut up, boy, and, and all them type of talks. And, and you know, bossy and more, not to the. The manual script of mm. police, how were they in Britain? So, so, so did you see yourself ever getting into music though? When you was a like guy in school and that one, if if you said to my whole block in Jamaica, Taz yeah. is in music, they would go, and uh, what was you doing though? Every <laughs> emulating yellow man, uh, you're okay. talking about my school then, <laughs> yeah. tiger, yeah, tiger, yeah, ninja man, um. Summer Beanie Man, like when he was younger, Beanie Mm. Man was younger, just emulating everything. And then, you know, I'll be honest with you, some people won't say it. Vanilla Ice had a lot to do with it. Of course, Ice, 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 baby. Come on, man. (laughs) Whoever said he wasn't feeling that change, they're lying to themselves. Big up Vanilla Ice, definitely. 100%. MC Hammer. Definitely. Facts. Um, 
Yeah, all the hit Michael Jackson. Heavy D. Heavy yeah, D. Heavy mm-hmm. D. Yeah, big up Heavy D. Criss just Cross. Criss Cross. Yeah, yeah, all that, that stuff. That generation, yeah, yeah. I was glued to the TV. So I went Bailey's. How was that for you? Yeah, coming back from Jamaica to go to Bailey's was wild animal. So, you you know, obviously Jamaica's different. Like, you are either this bad thing or mm. you're a good thing. Like, mm. you know, but coming to there, it was really bad. It was just aggression. Mm. It was bullying. It was, mm. sh- you know, it was a different <laughs> side of life. And I saw yeah. it and I was like, bro. How old it- was you when you went there, Bailey's? I came back about 13, 14 from Jamaica. Okay. And like, yeah, I fitted in, you know, Started rapping, spitting every day. Mm. Same way like Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Rapping, spitting every day. Now, when you was rapping, was you rapping in the American accent or the the, the rap? The rapping would be in an American. Okay. The yard team would be straight like Wayne Wonder, okay. Bujabantan, singing okay. them kind of Terra Fabulous position. <laughs> <laughs> All them type of things there. Just giving Bye. the vibes. You know what I'm saying? And giving the vibes from that. I'm just fresh from yard. Yeah. So mm. I'm giving them vibes. And a lot of people, yeah, man, a lot of great people was in the school. And just, it was different. Mm. England, it, it's a bit unruly. Yeah, of course mm. it is. Of course it is. <laughs> it was unruly, you know. There's, there's, there's no manners from, 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 <laughs> from your toddler, you, innit? Yeah. So you coming from Jamaica, you're going to have a different upbringing to most, you know what I'm saying? That's so what I'm saying. That's what it is. You but. know, one story I remember coming from... Um, Jamaica, they didn't tell me that there was this new gang about. So like an idiot, I jumped on the top of the roof of the school and I went to them, hey, you lot. Mm. I done that to them and they were Where's trying. this in Jamaica? <laughs> England. Oh, in England, yeah, and they just, yeah, yeah, and no. they just went. I don't, I don't know what they said, but I just flied that off was, the roof. That, so was, <laughs> that, that was that. That was a time when there was triads in the school, and that was, um, I think, SW. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what that gang was yeah. called there, there back in the day. Yeah, yeah, there was triads. What? Yeah, there was triads. Serious ones. They actually you chopped off. They actually chopped serious. someone's hand off in our school. Like it's known, a known person. They chopped off his hand, and you see, like our school, you couldn't open the doors from the outside, only the inside, just because of that. But when the tribes come and done their little thing, that's what they done, bro. Because I, I went there after Taz. I went there like in the... I only went there for one year in my fifth year, so... Yeah. The man never had tribes in their school, Yeah, right? there was Yeah, no, there was tribes. I was don't the, play with them. There, there was tribes at that time in London. But Taz, so coming out of school in your teenage years, how was that? Teenage years, yeah, man. Um, obviously, I went to the army at 19. Like army. army. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. my, my mom said, listen, there's yeah, what no army, English army. The yeah? British army. Okay, yeah. And that concrete Do you know what? Do you know what? I can't even knock you because I remember when we had that fort spoon yeah. when um Kirk brought me up there and we actually went to the job centre to go and speak to the army guy. <laughs> like, so I think about I don't know what age I was, but we did have that fort. So <laughs> mad. it's mad that you went and done it. We just wanted to do it to get a job. We thought, how can we get some money? Okay, if you go to the army, you earn that that year, that year do about five years and come out with the money. That's what, yeah. so that was our thinking. So, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> how, how was, was it, it for there? you? It was 25101658 Fusilier Row. I went there and I done... What is that, man? You know what? That was a mad kid. That was a mad kid. Listen. It was wrong of me. <laughs> It was, it was wrong with me. I should have never been there. I thought, I thought you was a convict. Trust me, I thought that was a prison <laughs> number. <laughs> but yeah, go on. So I did, I did there for um, two, three years and I got unsuitable soldier US. But that kind of sorted me out with the discipline. Um, my rifle was the SAA. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I wasn't a bad boy, but we were doing certain things in there, certain things I've learned along the way in my life. We was doing um, money, like... So all the guys used to spend their money in the naffy. What's that? Like yeah. a naffy was like their calf, their kind of drinking area and okay. stuff like that. They okay. would spend their money and we was doing loan sharking in there and stuff like that. Yeah. So like when you spend your money, you get your wages, then I get my wages and then I double up on my, well, you know, little things mm. like that. And um, it was just, I was on focus because listening to rap, like Nas and Mob Deep's album and dealing with the SA80. You know mm. what man thought they were? Really killer. So you're like proper trained in firearms then? Yeah, trained in firearms. Trained in, uh, they, when they gave it to me. And, they were, and even self-defence, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Not really self-defence as much. You didn't do no judo or nothing? N- a little bit of stuff like that, but mostly the rifle and... Um, you know, a lot. That's where I get to run a lot because okay. that's how I can run a lot okay. and stuff like that. So you got that. good so, cardio on that. Good cardio and stuff mm. like that. And I learned, you know, it taught me discipline, mm. how to, you know, wake you up in the morning, the mm. PT stuff, mm. you know, I'm not obviously not... So what time do you up, wake man. up in the morning? 
sometimes at seven o'clock, sometimes you're not know, sleep. In the training years, mm. you didn't sleep. Yeah, but yeah. I got US unsuitable soldier in the end. Mm. Obviously, like little arguments, mm. little like, you know, the guys would say something to me and I would say, hey, yeah, sleep and yeah, give me rifle. Mm. Like I would say that to them and, mm. you know, they, but they, they said they noticed. What did you have these times? Like a Jamaican accent? Well, you know what? I slip in and side and out of my okay, Jamaican like accent, most. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're I, around Jamaicans, you're going to... Yeah, yeah, fall plus, into it. But yeah. It's more fluent when you're cussing still. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But when we're doing corporate stuff, we try to do it with an English-British yeah. accent and let them know, you know what I'm saying, we can do that. But yeah, that, that's what happened in the army, you know? It was... it was it, Nigel Ben was there, not mm. at the time, but they said they rem- I remind them of Nigel Ben. Mm. I said, I'm not a boxer, but I remind <laughs> them. And there was little... You know, even now we're trying to change some of the rules rules of the army mm. like the racism and mm. the stuff like that I mean was, I, that, was that in the army when you was there 100% yeah, did, you, you did, you, did you get any of that 100% Receive. a sergeant said I can't remember his name he had a red gold and green belt and he said in front of like the whole troop he said well where Taz is from in Tesman where Tesman is from in mm. Brixton I'm not from Brixton I'm from Kellerton but mm, anyway okay. where Tesman is from in Brixton the day where this belt normally like things like that, you know, they were, yeah. you, you're going to get that and stuff like that. And, you know, all right, all right, black guy, right? Mm. Was, you, you get stuff It in those times. Obviously, they're trying to make it a, a fair playing field mm. right now. So a lot of my cousins have got their stay by, you know, the army. I'm sure we know a lot of Jamaicans and people that have nah, got their stay. None, none. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing I'm it. not even yeah. allowed to even know so they can you, do that. So yeah, you, you get your stay easier, easier. in the country. Makes yeah. sense though, isn't it? From yeah, the army, sense, yeah. yeah. So that that kind of, yeah, so it finished from there. And then, yeah, after that, I came out in the big bad world, Civvy Street, you know, never got really much help. Mm. There was a little apartment that my friend got in St. John's. Where's where's Civvy Street? Civvy Street is, okay, so when you're Mm. in Civvy, they call Mm. it coming out of the army. Okay. So you're going into Civvy Street. This is all army terminology. I still remember it, man. Civvy Street, yeah. So they they, they said, you're you're coming out to Civvy Street. So, you know, it was Bassenborn. So I'd done most of the training in Bassenborn. I'd done one or two in Germany. Because in other terms, they like to call it um, public mushrooms. I've never heard. Yes, I have heard that. Kept actually. in the dark and yeah. fed on shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the next army term. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, they got terms. I, no, I, I, what's that? What is, what's that terminology? What does that mean? It's just the next army term. Like they call the, the general public mushrooms in it because we're kept in the dark and fed on shit. That's i.e. the propaganda yeah, yeah, that's yeah. spread yeah, on yeah, the news sense. and all this makes sort sense. of stuff. Makes so, sense. yeah. So you're coming from the army now, and you came back to, uh, yeah, back to Civvy Street, uh, back to London. Nothing to do because before that. Oh, let's just go a little bit before that. You know, the usual kid thing. Never a bad boy. Just getting up to usual things. You know, West End. Mm. Trying to fit in, really, mm. where I fit because in. Because you're close to West End being from Kenneth. Kellen, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We used to go pro beaters at, at um, lunchtime at school. Come back with bare ice. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, I tell all people, of that shit there. You know what I'm saying? I tell saying? people That's that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 We don't know about that. We don't know about that. What's that? Pro Beatles is yeah. like a designer store at yeah, West End we used to go and they okay. used to sell like what everybody's basically wearing now. It's just okay. come back around. Everything does like a 360. Because my, my era, I think, oh, I don't know, it could have been older, but Peppermint, Bromley, they, everyone used to go Bromley and that. Yeah, I used to, that would be for the, like, for my daughter. Yeah, I used yeah, to go yeah, Peppermint yeah. for my daughter. But yeah, I was like, like Peppermint the kids of, and stuff like that. The yeah. designer stores yeah. that are not the actual designer That's, stores. Yeah, you was young. Era. Yeah, you was young. Yeah, you're showing your age now. What's a baby? Yeah, you have to go West End. West End, the whole trip of West End is dope. Mm. Chocadero, yeah, no, no, West no, End. No, see, yeah. And everybody was in West End. All the stars, you know, remember like Diddy, yeah. Jay-Z, mm. everybody used to come to West End. So West End, if you've gone to you the You know club, what, that's mad because how you're breaking it down, where we, we didn't really think like that, did we? Like all the stars are over West End. Like we didn't think like that. We was just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah, 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 yeah. Saying, but, Cause you're right next to the bridge. Bridge, yeah. It's a different outlook. I was addicted to West End, like mm. community center. That was my community center, and I think that did help grow me as well to know, you know, what this means, how to be corporate, how to fit mm. in with certain people, mm. and how to. I think that helped you're me. You're seeing it. It's right over it's the bridge. Isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm, that was my point. Like we're not seeing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. We're not seeing West End. We got, we got to travel at least. Good 20 half minutes, half an hour yeah. to get to West End. Yeah. You just walk over the bridge and it's right there. Houses of Parliament, Parliament. this, that, that. So, that's yeah, it. I get it. 
So before I went to the army, that structured kind of my, I was, you know, obviously trying a lot of things, trying to, you know, I tried to be certain things, you know, my uncles and people around me was very active. And they said, yeah, I remember when I sold my first thing and I spent the money mm. and they went, no, nah, man, leave this out. This is not for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> leave this out. You haven't got yourself a uh, yeah. you got, you know, no, no. You didn't put none away for a rainy day. You just nah, spent it I all. Just, I went to, straight to Bobito's and then, so he said, but, you know, a little bit of fraud was my thing, you know what I'm saying? Getting the cards. Allegedly. Yeah, dealing with the Nigers. And, Allegedly. You know what I'm saying? They, they were my mm. vibe. Mm. So mm. I always kept it smooth and just kept my vibe. Mm. And, you know, that's... And so, obviously, my mum said, well, this has got to stop, mate. you got to, you know, let's sort out your life, mm. get a little job. Mm. So that's when the army came. Mm. So I'd done a two-year in there. But I always wanted to do music from before I was mingling with people. I had stepdads, my family, Saxon Sound, we yeah. got Dennis yeah. Rowe. Big you know, definitely big up big Dennis. Up, yeah. We started at Dino's house a lot as well, Lambeth Walk. Lambeth Lambeth Dino says yeah. big, big up as big well. Up, Michael Dino, Million. Man. Big up Michael big Million up, as well. Oh, your brother's been a part of my story, like watching him mix, scratch, you know, yeah. only, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Owen, yeah, Owen, yeah. Big yeah. up Big Bro, man. That's what I'm saying. Big Bro's been a part of my So just watching and coming around those people, Freddie's clubs and vibing. There's a big story to it, you know mm. what I'm saying? The bads and the, you know, the goods. So, and then, yeah, obviously get to the army part. <laughs> so what made you want to lock down and be an artist? Like you said, yeah, I can do this. What made you like want to do that? Well, in my head, as somebody called Simon in my hood, I was always uh, 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 rapping with him and um, talking with him. Mm. And he said to me, write down all what you want, innit? Mm. So I write, I write down kind of a bucket list of what I wanted, Def Jam UK, mm. I want to be signed. I want to learn about writing. I want to... He was telling me all the mm. things about so music. You, so you wasn't an artist before you was writing that down? I was an artist, but I never... I was being teached by people like... I mean, I was just mixing with so much people. Like, you know, I remember Green Sleeves, the record label. Yeah, no, of course. Hitting me up and, you know, hanging with them. And I, there's too much stories to say. That's why I don't want to miss nobody out. Yeah. But it's just... Yeah, I, was, I was thinking like... What am I gonna? I'm a I'm a co-producer, a producer, an artist, mm. somebody who gives a vibes, who can see a vision. Because mm. that's as I'm going on, I've learned like what I'm what I am because I'm learning a lot of things and doing a lot of things like giving a vision and giving a style, mm. a pattern. So that's where it came. Like so, you would say my first ever thing that I got a pay paid check for was um I had a girl called Cassandra Fox. She was my best friend. Mm. And she done a song called Touch Me in the Morning, number one. Touch yeah, me yeah. in the morning, house. I swear mm. down. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was a big yeah. tune too. She was my best friend. They found her. I said, go and do the record. Mm. Then she said to me, we started to work in my bedroom. Like I was beatboxing. Mm. And then she said to me, you know what? Um, I want you to beatbox for me. I'm going to pay you to come in the studio, beatbox me and co-produce a song. Mm. So I went there. There was Fraser T. Smith who recorded mm. all the, produced all the biggest records. Do you know mm. that Tinchy Strider, Teo mm. Cruz sound? Okay. And that he massive guy. Mm. Um, Kano, he done all Kano stuff. Mm. And he was there and Dry as a Bone was there. Some people who worked with Mary J. Black, they've killed the charts. Mm. Mm. And I, I looked how they live because mm. I was just... <laughs> In my head, there was no UK rappers to look up on. Mm. I had yeah, a couple of drum and bass. Mm. Um, my stepdad used to deal with General Levy and all that, but I just wanted to know what, where's the money at? Where's the industry mm. that's lucrative? Mm. So when I saw them, mm. that Craig David was, it was in Craig David's studio and um, it was a vibe and I'd done it and she gave me a 500 pound check. And then in the middle of it, we went and ate at mm. an expensive Italian restaurant. Mm. That's when I knew... Mm. These guys are getting money. Mm. Mm. Like the way they were eating, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Linguinis and yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just said, you know but what? You I like this. You're skipping over like a crazy point, man. You said you was in Craig David's studio. studio yeah. Bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bro. How was that? Uh, how did you get there, bro? It, what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> getting there. Yeah. How did you get there? Some, somebody managed Cassandra and the guys who managed Cassandra, I think Dryza Ball, they had a, mm. a link up. Fraser was what? Fraser was. Craig David's guitarist okay. from a long time. Okay. That, that guy who plays the yes, Spanish yes, guitar. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So he was there and um, yeah, so I'd done the beatbox, done the production on the day. She sung the song and she gave me my first 500 pound check. Mm, mm. And I went, Whoa! And that's just for beatboxing. That's just for beatboxing, just for beatboxing and mm. kind of songwriting and okay. structuring it together. And I just said, yeah, this is where I want to be eating. That's what, you know, if I'm in music. Speaking mm. of songwriting, how did you start with the songwriting and how is a songwriting a songwriter's session like how does it plan out well as as i went forward in the game 
I, I've been songwriting with Michael Million. Me and Michael Million been penning down and he's helped me a lot with my album mm, and put together. Beginning. But as it came along, it, we, we were called Just The Rascal, my first good big song. Mm. So yeah, then go there. Mm. It, as it came around, you know, the beatboxing, because I'm, I'm not a full producer, I'm a co-producer, songwriter. Mm. So as it came around, I would be able to hear these sounds in my head and be able to project them into a mic mm. and make them, you mm. know what I'm saying? And know how to structure the song. So I said to- Do you to, still do that today? Yeah, okay. I still do so that that's today. A formula. That's a formula. That's a formula. That's a formula. That's a formula. Yeah. That's and the then formula. you tell the, at the producer. I tell the producer, yeah. which it doesn't take away the biggest, Jermaine Dupree, everybody. Mm. Most no, of them, course, they've got course, 10 course. producers. But yeah. yeah, how the songwriter more developed was songwriting camps. Mm. So I've been yeah. all around the world for songwriting camps. I've been, you know, China, America, like, you know, so, so Rihanna will say, I've got a songwriting camp. Mm. I want to invite some of the best writers all around the world, Europe. Mm. Some, mm. Okay, some cool. of the time, yeah. respectfully, I get picked. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It, that's major, bro. That's man. major. So, no, but talk about the camps, like the overseas camps, for the for the young kids that want to be in. The so the so business. the songwriting camps are like you know you get fifteen of the best writers. Let's say a Chinese camp. Okay. So they say, yo, we want songs for K-pop or you know their Chinese mm. thing. Mm. Yeah. You go there. There's um fifteen producers, 15 songwriters, and they collaborate, you know, the big up Tony, he brings me there, it's like a billionaire. Mm. He has all like rooms in the hotel. So they own all the rooms in the hotel. You get Mm. your dinner, you get your breakfast, you get flights paid for everything. Okay. And it's $10,000 a record. Mm. So you work there and you go from rooms to room daily. So they rotate. You might Mm. have a room with... Mm. Ill Mill one mm-hmm. night mm-hmm. and then a room with somebody else mm-hmm. another, you know what I'm saying and yeah. they just rotate from room to room and there's mm-hmm. like two three writers there they're, they're very selective how they put them together mm-hmm. and learning that that's just, crazy yeah. I didn't even know that stuff was going on it's crazy out here you know um, yeah because when you think of artists they haven't really got time to if you're up there in the public you ain't got time to write a hit song every day mm. You know, mm. Drake is a madman, though. He's, mm. He stays with his laptop. I heard this guy stays with his laptop from mm. what I've heard. Doing what? But what does he do just, with the laptop? <laughs> just writing and just putting, okay. like, you know, like, voice notes and putting so stuff. So he actually like, writes reference. his stuff as well? Yeah. He does get references from people and stuff okay. like that. But, but he, he does, writes as yeah, well. Yeah, he does yeah. write a lot. That's, but he's that kind of artist anyway. It's not like he's, uh, with rappers, it's, it's technical. No, we don't want no one writing our stuff. But with him, he sings as well in it. So singers get stuff ripped for them. So... <laughs> That's where he can get away with that, so, I think. No. Do you I think, think it's... Uh, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I think we're not in the... That is totally from years ago change, especially mm. the American market where they need big hooks, mm. big records. Mm. They haven't got time to play around and make mm. you write all your mm. stuff. And mm. that that was the old label process. They... Yeah. they Hello, you're mad. Yeah, seven writers. <laughs> boom, bam, bam. Wait, he's right. You talk about writing. And mm. I learned that more in America because I used mm. to think, man, sit down there all day. They ain't mm. got time for that. Doing that. You remember you got shows, mm. you got press, mm. you got th- these things are mm. more important than mm. the record. They just need a hit record. Yep. Yeah, I need a hit. I wish Paul was there. We just mm. said it. They need I need a hit record. And even Paul's way of working. I need a hit record. Okay, instead of our old way where we sit down hours and go, yeah, uh, and that part. Yeah. Taz on the hook. Yeah, that man on the thing, B. Mm. Yeah, that man on the thing. If he doesn't do that right, I'm going to send the parts over there to that mm. man to write that part again. But mm. it's about, mm. it comes to about 17 people mm. on the yeah, song. That's crazy. That's, mad. that's crazy. Even with rap. Even mm. with rap. Them old school, a lot of, you know, Foxy's lyrics. So you reckon them. that's happening with Jay-Z? Say, I would think he wrote all of his yeah, stuff. So, yeah. Nah, he writes for people. Jay-Z's the writer. Mm. He okay. writes for people. But what yeah. about yourself? Yeah, I, I, I reckon choruses and stuff. No, chorus is chorus. We get, but he yeah. does. He does write for us. So obviously, Jay Z's a writer. There's yeah. there's difference between writers and you know what I'm saying That's Foxy I'm, Brown. I J- love Jada Kiss is a writer. Jada J- J- Kiss is a writer. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those are the the people I'm talking about. But with Drake, I would that wouldn't surprise me, and I would I wouldn't take nothing from him. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I don't put him in that that rap category of those rappers there, like Jay-Z and Jada Kiss, and he's a different kind of he's, artist. He's all round. Yeah, they're that's versatile. it. No, they're, they're like lyricists, isn't it? Like, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. It takes a genius to, to project it anyway. Mm. It still takes Definitely. a, you know what I'm Definitely. saying? It still 110%. takes to project. I don't, I, we used to give away things mm. like, oh, you didn't write that, mm. but it still takes somebody, it's like an actor, you get a script mm. and you're, that's why how you have to see it and you're projecting that and you're projecting a lifestyle on the camera, isn't it? Yeah, so it's someone still, else wrote it. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Makes sense. So, so how did you get your deal with Def Jam? Well, yeah, so that's ra- major, bro. <laughs> Very, yeah. I remember hearing about that. I remember hearing, right, <laughs> Taz, right, right, that's crazy. 
so within that time, Dizzy's got a lot to do with it because there's a guy called Simtex. Simtex, yeah, DJ Simtex. Simtex or Semtex? Semtex. Semtex, yeah. The one with one arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DJ. Um, and I was in Dizzy's studio. We kind of had a studio we had a relationship with his manager from mm. a long time and was kind of doing a lot of things and um nick denton the first time i went over there was um lex diamond r.i.p, mm. R.I.P. um done a done a dub plate with wiley and Flo done mm. and it was over eskimo mm. and um golden melody from from um uh, the which judge are from again? Uh, Angel Town. Yeah, Golden yeah, Melody yeah. from Angel Town. Yeah. brought me over there. He mm. brought he, he he brought me to the studio. They were doing a dub plate, and Golden Melody went on the the first bit of the dub plate with Flo Dan and Wiley from mm. a war them war gunshot them get yeah. blood talent fly through face and I pop them yeah, head from off of yeah, them neck. Yeah, yeah. So he done that. Mm. Then I heard these two guys spitting in a British... This is where it all changed for me. Mm. I heard these two guys spitting in a British accent and I was like, rah, what's that? And I was like, half oh, stepping, that ain't me. Gotta retaliate inside. It was mm. just mad and while he was going, man, I'm big bike, man. And mm. they were just doing this thing and mm. I was like, rah, mm. that is murderous. Mm. Yeah, I, I need e- to... Everyone was on that, bro. <laughs> everyone. Yeah, I everyone to... is that. Everyone, even at school, we're writing no sort of lyrics. We're writing no sort of bars. That's what we was doing. Even so the... it was nothing for you to not see that and not want to get on it, you know what yeah, I'm saying? If you yeah. liked music and you was coming from Jamaica, and it's similar, like, I always said that, like, Jungle, even, like, Garage, like, those things, they stem from, like, Raga. Definitely. Like, the whole format, even now, like, how they're talking, yeah, the clashing, facts. everything, it's all from, like, the, you know what I'm saying? Dance or <laughs> yeah, Jamaican, dance or yeah, thing, reggae. Yeah. So that's where it comes from, so it's, yeah. <laughs> and I've always liked those sort of artists on, on them tracks as well. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. So I saw that, and I, I just said, yo, this is the, and at the time, I was mingling within their studio anyway. I was coming to their studio. I was in the same studio, mm. Atomic in um, Bermondsey. Yeah. It had a big complex. Yeah, so I, I was mingling, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was I mingling that. in their studio. Dizzy was there while he was there. Anyway, so after that, we went to do the proper track and Melody, Golden Melody said, follow me. Fright yeah. Night. So it, it, mm. you could say near 57th Dynasty because they worked with Shy and I, the Fright mm, Night, mm, you know mm, what I'm mm, saying? Wolfie, mm, mm, all the Spracket. Mm. They worked with, you know what I'm saying? So we went there. We went to Bermondsey. And um, when we went to Bermondsey now, um, he was doing it, the same thing, but Wiley, Dizzy, everybody was there. They done that. And then I done the chorus. I let my go on and I run up them up. That's not nothing. Roll deep no back from nothing. Mm-hmm. And then hey, that's, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where it kind of started. I remember having that on my, my tape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that. When you say you've done that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, I didn't even know that. Back of the bus <laughs> on the way I to school with headphones. <laughs> that's the thing about you, Taj. You've done so much things that I don't even know about. Like you've been behind or around or you've done it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. So many accolades, man. Do you know the funny thing is, I I love just music. Mm. I just loved it. I didn't really do it for because it went when the popularity started to come. It, it started to scare me a little bit. It's mm. like too it's too much people in my face. What do you mean from getting your deal? Because we were still on that. Yeah, story. the deal. Yeah. So yeah. It, it happened from there. Then now I had a guy in um in in Bermondsey called Vanguard. Mm. And he was, we was both poor. I was sleeping there every day. I was living in Plasto. This time I moved to East London. I don't know, but I was, mm. I'm just a move about her. Mm. And I was in East London and I was walking through the tunnel and everything was mad. And I just said, you know what? This guy, Dizzy's going to blow. Obviously, I had a good relationship with Dizzy's manager, shout mm. to Nick Denton. Mm. And so my name was circling around, mm. you know, Nick Denton, New Simtex, they had a relationship and you know what happens. Mm. So, um, yeah, I remember just there on the vibe, walking through these places, going through. And then one day I just said to um, Vanguard, which was my uh, like engineer slash bigger producer, I said to him, yo, mm. UK rap's going to blow. Mm. I want peace. Mm. And uh, I believe that Dizzy is going to be that guy. Mm. And um, let's do something. Mm. He went to me, fuck off. Can I swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool, yeah. I like, I like, I like who he was because he was, he was like, "Yo, fuck off! Mm. I don't believe in UK rappers. It's, you know, rare, rare, rare." I said, "No, nah, it's gonna blow, man. The grime thing's gone, man." He said, "All right, let's do it anyway." So I said, "I want to give this guy a signature tune." 
And it went like, just, just a rascal. I, I started to do the beat, but dun, 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 dun. and then we're just a rascal. Wait a wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. 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 You know, like, you just spun What the fuck's going on out here, man? Like, what? 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 You say you just started just beatboxing, actually. Like. I just beatboxed. It was just a rascal. And do you know what? Do you know, sorry to cut you, my bro. Do you know what's crazy? Because it's making sense to me now. Because that beat, like I said to you the time on the phone, that beat sounded like someone's getting mixed down like a yard rhythm. Yeah. And that's where it comes from, the influence and all that. So yeah, it's yeah. imagine, but continue, that, my bro. Sorry, my brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I just started to beatbox that in the studio and I came up with it. It's just a rascal. It's just a, I just started to rascal and said, yeah, this guy needs his signature tune. So we done it. And I said, yeah, this is good. Because, you know, it's like a lick, innit? Your belly's touching your ribs. That was yeah. my hustle. Yeah, yeah, no, of course it is. Y'all the street man. dudes. Um, that was my hustle. I needed to eat. Yeah, I was no, like, yo, it's, it's time to get talk. some money that's now, that's son. That's you that's know that's what I'm saying? Dope, People man. are passing you in the benzes because you lot are hustling yeah. and doing your but, thing. <laughs> but that's the next point. And this is even to, um, like, even the younger generation. This is a this is a big big point. Like like you said, you'll see even like us. Like we we're out there, innit? We're hustling, driving around in the bend. But you stayed true to your vision, and that's why you got where you got. So, for the younger generation, if you do that, just don't don't worry about your friends shutting, doing robberies and all these sort of stuff to get fast money. Just think about the long term vision because Taz is the prime example of, Trust of that. Me, you no know what I'm saying? How long? It's true, no man. No no yeah. yeah. Don't know, um, just follow follow the crowd, innit? I've always been different anyway. Follow mm. the crowd. So so much people follow the crowd and you end up being who you're not being, who you're not to, supposed to be, and then you give you give the whole thing in at the court and say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <For> <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I've always just been who I've been. And so. my nan would say copyright to copy wrong, you know. Innit? That's what I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so where it, was we? Yeah, so um I done that at the studio. Um, just a rascal and then immediately one week when it hit I gave it to Nick Denton because Nick Denton said you know what I like you mm. when somebody likes you and checks for you you know they check for you so they, he said I like you you know and Nick Denton's a street dude mm. the, 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 the Dizzy was grown up by a street dude mm. a white street dude who mm. was doing his thing mm. so yeah. he went you know what I like you um, Dizzy's doing an album why don't you do it so I was A&R in in mm. my head without mm. even knowing it so I done that just a rascal was that the first track on the album no. Okay. It was it was the third single. Mm. So we done that, and then we gave it to Nick. Dizzy didn't like it when he first heard it, but mm. Nick encouraged him to voice it, and it be- it became the first sing first sing a uh, third single, and we got our first check. Sorry, That's to, it. sorry to cut you. This is for my generation. That is a big shocker because the way how Dizzy spun that song and it was charted and it was played and it was played and it was. Everywhere, yeah, Dizzy messed it up, man. Shout messed out it. Dizzy. He messed, oh, he messed it up, man. Shout he out Dizzy because he messed it he up. Messed up that joint, and the yeah. video day and everything. But you know, we got our first. What was it? Twenty k, mm. man. So we was hungry. Mm. The studio was running out of rent because mm. Vanguard never had no mm. money either. Mm. And we got our first twenty k, and then. Tw- we- but like first check, yeah. First check. So that, come on, man. Twenty k from nothing to twenty k. Come on. That's what I'm saying. We he, got, he just said it like it's nothing. <laughs> we got our first twenty k, and that gave us that. That said, okay, this is something now. So from doing that now, obviously you've done your on roll deep song with the chorus. You're on just a rascal. Mm. You know, A and R's are smelling. They're going, who's this guy? Taz guy. Yeah, they're piece. thinking to themselves, who's this guy? This mm. guy's obviously got something. He's not, you know, he's not done it the normal way where he's spitting everywhere, but mm. he's got something. He's got some type of capability to mm. make a hit. He can mm. make a hit. Mm. So, you know, one day I was just sitting on the block and I got a phone call. Yeah, man, it's a Simtex. You want to come and meet 50 Cent? Mm. Come, man, come with me to Ministry of Sound and meet 50 Cent. And big up Simtex, he took mm. me on the road. Big Every up. show mm. he was doing, I would either carry his bags. I was mm. broke as well, mm. and he'd give me like 150 quid. Mm. So I'm learning from an early age. And obviously, these times I'm mixing with Dizzy. So we've done the Sean Paul tour with Dizzy. We've done this tour, that tour. Like, I've done all, been on the road with Dizzy. So. How was the tours? And what, the was to- your, what was your best moment on tour? Man, learning it so early... It was lit. I can't. It was like hotels, girls, vibes. You know, energy. Getting the fr- the clothes. The cl- I think yeah, it prepared me. Uh, I wasn't so excited when I became an artist and got signed because I was doing it already. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, Dizzy would, a bigger, he was a goal in the situation because man would say, no, nah, you got to sit in the front seat mm. of the bed. No, you got to sit in the back 
of mm. the Benz. I used to sit in the front seat and chat with the driver. I was mm. real, edit. Yeah. I wanted to chat with the driver. Yo, mm. how was your dear? Yeah. Yeah. But he, Dizzy would go, you sit in the back. So he's showing me certain yeah. things. So, okay. and you know, Dizzy had his money in his shoe box from early. He mm. had big money in shoe boxes mm. from early. So mm. it, he, he, he he's taught He's been doing me. his thing from early, man. Man mm, used to Dave. be raving, innit? And, and we, <laughs> so we used to see this the, the little guy on the stage and all, you know what I'm saying? That's so what I'm we, saying. He's from early, bro, he's been out there, man. So he got to teach me from early and, you know, going around touring with him, you're just learning the game from when your mm. time comes. And then obviously that stopped. And then how the deal became. So every time I used to go in the car with Simtex, I would have another record ready. Mm. I'd say, right, this is time for me to become an artist now. Mm. I'm going to have fun with this because I wanted to have fun mm. as an artist. Mm. So I started to play him songs every time. And then he, he played me Kanye West. Mm. Before Kanye West with Kanye mm. and he'd say rare, rare, rare. And he'd say, you like this, you like that. And we both played music. Then every time I'd make sure. And then one day Nick came to me. This time me and Nick's relationship got tight. Nick said to me, somebody cares. He came right on my block on the estate. He said, come here, come in. The, it was a white Lexus air conditioning. Mad them mm. time they mm. remember all this. <laughs> and he said, come here, come here, mate. Somebody cares about your life. Mm. You got a five album deal on the table. That's, mm. And that's where, but obviously between then I'd done the Ashanti remix. Yeah. yeah. I think Akon just was coming out and I'd, I got on that record. And then I'd done another Ashanti remix and we killed them. And they made sure they paid me. You know, record companies, mm. they don't pay early. They paid mm. me as soon as I'd done it, the week that I'd done it. So yeah. I knew we was forming a relationship. Mm. Okay. So you came in getting money straight away from music? Oh, yeah. 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 Without like, get, even yeah, 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 being a You came in getting yeah. money you yeah. to the back yeah. straight away. Yeah, it was good. Good times. Because I, I, even without being an art, um, artist, I was just writing and, and causing vibes. So that all happened. And then um, obviously the five album deal came to the table. You know, I would say the figures. It's not, a, mm. you know, it came to one one fifty. It was a five album deal. Mm. It was all one hundred and fifty k. Yeah. Okay. And they yeah. would renew the deal as the, as your mm. first album go and the second album. See the so. But it wasn't a three sixty, though, wasn't it? Nah, yeah. no, no three sixty. You yeah, kept so your <laughs> yeah, you kept your show money. You kept your merchandise, everything like that. So yeah. speaking on that, if you can. For the young kids and queens that want to be artists or in the music industry, what is the do's and don'ts when it comes to these things and the record deals? Well, I would I would take Nick's book of class. Nick has a book of class, and I'm not going to say who he's managed before and who he said he who, said who is Nick yeah, to who you? Is Nick and Nick Denton was is Dizzy Russell's okay, manager. Okay, yeah, okay, he was the one okay. that managed. He said, mm. "Seeing you, mate. Mm. I know what you're going to do. Get fur coats." Have Crystal and mm. be with all the BIT, mm. you know, yeah, all the yeah. women. You're going to want to do that. It's me. No, no, I swear, Nick, I'm not going to do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can't even say it how you said it. You, you, said, see, when you see, when you said, I, I swear, Nick, that was what, to get the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but man. in your head, you're thinking, yeah, as soon as I come to yeah, 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 yeah. blowing up. You, you, <laughs> mm. you know, so yeah, you get that type of money as a young guy from the neighborhood. It swells your head a little bit. You how never, old was you? I think I was 22 with that deal, you know, 22. Yeah, see, that's major, man. That's major, yeah. you know. 22, you get, you get that kind of d- deal. You see, already I'm in the industry, so I'm not really bothered about it, but now you're getting your own, you're getting a bigger advance and a bigger thing for your, so seeing all that and, 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 and receiving that, you know, it, I obviously I spent it before it came. Mm. I spent it. How you do that? By giving my mom money. I yeah. give it. Nick was very good. That's why I'm bigging him up. I, mm. Although we've had our problems, I'm bigging him up. He gave me a lot of my money before. Okay. So you know, obviously, remember, I'm hustling all this time in my life. So I've got my first break now. Mm. So my mom's waiting for bills and all these type of things from a long time. You know, mm. if you're from a real household, mm. she's mm. waiting. So no, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And you just done a real thing. Yeah. That's the first <laughs> person you're breaking mommy. off. That's, that's mom. Saying, that's what. Yeah. yeah. Then you're breaking me. off mommy. That's it, man. So, that's, nothing else has to be explained. <laughs> So he gave he, he gave me that and made sure, you know, I was all right. Like I said, yeah, I need 10 for that, mm. 10 for that. And this this is how he confident was he he was. This was way before the deal. Mm. He knew that he was gonna get it. Mm. That's why I said industry people know that's whether crazy, man. <laughs> no, that's that, crazy. Hey, that one there is way a before key, I signed. Is a very big key. Way, way before you signed. Way before I signed. That, way before. That's somebody that really trusted in your <laughs> opinion and it, it, the way how you flew and yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I think that as well, but you, as you like know from the streets, when you got the plug source just piping down on mm. you, he just knows, no, I'm going to get this deal anyway. Mm. Mm. So he knows the deal was set in stone. Mm. 
and things could go wrong, but he yeah. just knew he was, you know what I'm saying? And probably he would have got a deal somewhere else anyway, because at that time it was a good bargaining time. When one label says 150, somebody else is saying, even when I was, before I was going to get the deal, Polydor called me and I was always going to Polydor showing them my tracks and they went, you sure you don't want to sign over for, here? For, for, for the, oh yeah, for the viewer's purpose, what's Polydor? Yeah. Polydor Records was a universal group. That so, was so it's another record record label, label yeah, okay, where yeah. Dynamite was. Okay, that was yeah, where so they signed Miss Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that. they signed yes. Miss Dynamite. They're still going strong to this but, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polydor, big yeah. up Ben, big up, yeah, yeah, big yeah. up Polydor still. They phoned me and said, "You sure we'll double what they want to give?" So that was the bargaining mm. time. Mm. So you know that went good. Got the deal. Enjoyed it. Still touring with Dizzy. Still working on other records as well. Mm. So that's my thing. I'm a writer, so I'm never gonna stop writing. You know, done a few awards, ceremonies, the Mobos, you know, the Mercury, mm. you know. Where did you perform at the Mobos? I, no, I didn't perform at the Mobos, okay. you know. It was just at the time. Estelle won it that year, actually, when the okay. year when we done okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> Estelle won it. So, you know, going through that and, like, just having all my dream, everything put in my face, I didn't really enjoy it. I was like, I don't know what went wrong with me. Obviously, there were some personal problems. I had depression issues as well. I was a mm. bit depressed. And it was all coming at me too much because I don't like people... What's that from? I just don't like people being nice to me, like, when they don't... It was a bit weird. No, it's, it's, it's trust me. The you get phone calls. Yeah. What do you mean, the fake love? Or, yeah, or it's yeah. just a lot of fake nice. love and being nice to me yeah. for the. It was too overwhelming, man. Because mm. obviously, you're going from somebody who people cared about. Obviously, I was always in the hood, being cool, and mm. but they care about you too much. Mm. <laughs> Hey, mm. hey, brother, my brother. Mm. And all this, and it's too much for me. I get nervous, man. No, nah, cool, school, cool, cool. I'm from the South, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm doing a runner from them people there, right? Yeah, cool, man. I know I feel you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was too much. It was a, so, But how did that have an effect on your mental? Well, yeah, it was just too much. It was overwhelming. I was a young kid, drinking a lot, you mm. know, practicing and other things. That like, It just, it kind of just... M- m- it just, I don't know, man. It just freaked me out. What do you was, mean, like you had a breakdown? Or... Yeah, I, I think I had a breakdown, man. It freaked me out too much. It was just, and then, then you're hearing loads of stuff from the industry because you're dealing with a different kind of corporate setting. Like mm. some people say, don't talk to those people. Mm. And I just was getting too much information at a fast mm. pace and I didn't like it. About what? Music, how this all works, how, you know, there's a lot of politics in it. Mm. But so on my first album, it done quite well for a UK um, there wasn't a lot of help of radio play. There wasn't a lot of, but it done it done quite well. Mm. They and done, what was the first album for the viewers? What was it? Um, analyze this. Analyze this. Yeah, yes. analyze this. So you know, it done quite well. You know, radio one at the time, basically in that new phase, there was Shy Steed, there was Skinny Man, there was a, quite a few of us in that new phase. They made basically one extra, and Channel U was made for kind of us, this okay. new era yeah. ushering. Yeah. Because yeah. what they realised on Radio 1 is they can't play all the UK urban songs. Mm-hmm. So what they got to do is channel them over to one extra. Mm. So when you know the system of how the records work, mm. it just turned me mad. I was just like, this is a lot. I have to deal with radio pluggers. Mm. I have to deal with this. It was just, it was a lot for me and, and being in the meetings. And I lost kind of my will to record. So I needed a, a certain a intervention. And remember, in this time, the only person I could ever learn from was this, obviously, but he's doing his own thing there. Mm. And Mega Man. Because mm, they've yeah. only they're the only two people that mm. be, he would have been the greatest person to be. Mm. He would have signed everybody if there's certain things never mm. went on. Because mm. he would have been the greatest person. So I never had a lot to mm. learn from. Who's that? Mega Man. Mega Man from yeah. Soul Solid. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because they've been through certain things. So I never had a lot of mentors mm. who who could teach me things. You know what I'm saying? Soul to Soul. Mm. I learned a lot from them. Jazzy B going course, to Soul yeah. to Soul Studios. That's where we used to. I think that was our second place of recording. See, yeah, second place. Oh, that was dope, man. Yeah, yeah. Did we record that SMS album there? Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah. So, I would have been fish tank and everything. Yeah, yeah. all of that. Was yeah. It? Yo, it looks good in there. <laughs> we were paying, what was it, 650 a session or 350? Yeah. I can't yeah. even remember. One Come on, two, that but, independent yeah. hustle. Yeah, at that yeah, time. yeah they, they, How was it in there? Mill and Taz, how was it being in Soul to Soul? That's the first time I saw that big desk and all that. So, what was it? The Neve desk, okay. yeah. So it was mad, yeah. We loved oh, it, man. Dope, man. It felt like the um, spaceship. The end. I, I think you used to think the hit comes from here. Yeah, if I recorded it, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know the streets made a hit album from his bathroom. Yeah, yeah. So There's some noise for you. Streets made that hit album from a bathroom. What? That label records in a bathroom. There you, you go, mean, man. It like the, the the booth, the booth place is in the bath. Mm. Yeah, that's where they made those hits. The yeah, streets. That's crazy, man. That's mad. 
And that's where he made his first album. Yeah. Obviously, he don't record there now, innit? No, nah, I don't think that's so. Where, that, that's yeah, how he made it, his that's, that's it, crazy. It, it was a small hub label. I didn't know about that. But I've always stuff. said that there's no formula. It's just if it's going to work for you, if it's your time, it's that's your it. time. Yeah. If it's not, yeah. it's yeah. not. Yeah. But there's no, there's no formula because everyone's just trying to do what everybody else is doing. But when you should just be yourself, like you, for you real. was being yourself. 100%, man. It's, a, you know, I, I didn't follow no no formula or nothing like that. I just, yeah, be myself and from, you know, what I've picked up along the way, like from what I've learned. So did you complete the five album deal? No, that's what I said. We were there in the middle. So mm. obviously my whole life is a thing. I was, the biggest show I'd done was the Jay-Z and Beyonce. Yeah, that's crazy. What, did, did you see them? Yeah, everybody was yeah, there. that's mad. A lady named Roseanne, I think I yeah. put her in the chat. She just brought Jay-Z and Jay-Z, Jay-Z over to me and Dizzy. Mm. Remember, uh, being with Dizzy and the management, mm. I was meeting everybody anyway. It was no mm-hmm. gas. Mm. I was already kind of settled in. Jay-Z, mm. I mean, Dizzy done the Justin Timberlake tour. Mm. So I was already settled mm. in. I, I wasn't like, I who's these that. people? And I was like, yeah, he, this is Dizzy, mm. He's, you know? So they, he came over, talked talk to us, said, yo, talked to Dizzy, basically. Mm. But she brought him to say hello to me. And he she, he said, respect to, mm. I like what you're doing to Dizzy. And then mm. I went, right, that's Jay. Mm. And then um, done that show. And just a lot of things, man. I think I didn't have my team as well. Michael Millian didn't like, I think he didn't like some of the corporate people. I'm being real. He just didn't like, it's he a tried, lot. He tried to get my brother Michael Millian here, man, but he, he says <laughs> he's, he's not on the camera on, thing, man. No, so, you know, but, my brother. But big up Michael Millian. Michael, he's done so time, much for the, um, all all the, the, for the UK rap game. So Real much. Goal goal in definitely the game. pioneer, legend. Pioneer. All of that. And yeah, bare flowers over here at Free <laughs> Smoke for um, yeah. Michael Millian, man. That's Real my brother, real. you know what I'm saying? A hundred. <laughs> yeah. He didn't like it. He just didn't like it. He's like, I don't like these people, man. I'm back to the streets. Mm. And that's when he started to get on his street game. Like, there's, mm. the, you know oh, what I'm saying? with the DVDs and stuff? Yes. Okay. That's when he started. That's where, yeah. Oh, wow. I think it was, I, Michael, I swear it was my advance that helped some of those. <laughs> 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 your brothers, <laughs> your brothers, though. That's, yeah, how, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's how I it's love supposed it, man. to be. Yeah, that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. When it's brothers, <laughs> you're going to do that, man, naturally, yeah. man. But he got he got paid for his bit anyway, so he didn't really like it, and um, and he was just normal about it. I think we was just normal. We was too normal about it. I mean, we're in a place and we're dealing with um, all these type of people, and we're just cool. Mm. You know, it's like Cassidy was there and mm. all the big UK US rappers, mm. and we went and chilled with um, what's his name, Witness the Fitness. What's my name? Roots Maneuver. We was we was big real. Up Roots Maneuver, we, big up, big me up. and Michael Mel kept it a hundred percent real because. Think- you appear on his album, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, he big me up one of them yeah, though. Yeah, yeah he big me up on one of his album. Yeah, we just kept it real. We were just vibing. We was backstage sipping Alize and vibing. And we was it like? I mean, some guys, you know, their knickers get wet when they see mm. certain celebrities. Nah, course, yeah, we yeah, was yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 we was just normal. Yeah, we was just normal. I think mm-hmm. people. I feel like even them celebs, they, they they fuck more with people like that. It was normal and just, mm. you know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like you more. And like Dizzy kept it normal. You know, mm. the camp that I was with, they probably even Diddy offered Dizzy a verse and he, he refused. Yeah, see. Ooh. The camp that I was with, they were really on their thing. Like, mm. there was Tunnel Vision, mm. you know who you are, and Rever. Because even when I come to my album, and this is how I learned about figures, this and that, you would think that I would say, yeah, Kanye West, this, that, that. And I went to it and it went, Shh, just calm down. Mm. You got a certain amount of money here. We, you already got this. We'll use certain things to make the album. Maybe on the second one, and that come to my thing. I always wanted to blow and mm. be an international artist. At that time, UK, and I think still they don't really partner up with an American label and say, mm. okay, we've done the English run and the European mm. run. Mm. I got a big up UK now. They do a European run, which mm. is better, but they don't do. Let's cross this overseas no, and really to cross market. It over. Yeah, we have okay. to. So that's where I had a problem with the label. I was like, why don't you? I'm Jamaican. Why don't you want to break me in in overseas? Why don't we do that? And they were just like, no, we only stick to Europe. We stick to our territories in the UK. Mm. And I just had enough. And then obviously, my producer, the main producer, my team, some of them fall sick as well. Mm. You know, <laughs> beer depressants in music. <laughs> so some of them fall sick, so they didn't want to work it no more. And then I just lost my team, my will to write for Taz, yeah. the artist. Mm. And I just had enough, man. So I needed an intervention. And I'll tell you, intervention is true. I was in my house putting, like, just feeling depressed, man, mash up. Just my mum was just coming to me saying, you're all right, son. I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm just fed up, man. Because this time the deal kind of dropped. Okay. So I said to, when we had a, 
thing. They said, if you don't produce a certain amount of records by this time, you're not going to get the option to go again. And I just said, I don't care. I remember down the road, I ripped it up and went, I don't care. Mm. I could just go on Dizzy's label. I was just saying some cocky shit to mm. myself. I, I was like, it, it, it's, it's so wild. Mm. I want to go on an independent anyway. So obviously that never really happened. And then I just, I was so depressed at home, just chilling at home, taking out my money out of the till, drawing out my money, feeling depressed. And my cousin phoned me from America and he mm. went to me, yo, you should start, you should just come to States, man. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I need America, man. Isn't, yeah, man, people, things happen all the time. You know, artists go through shit, depression. That's nothing in America. It's mm. new. It's mm. nothing new. Mm. Just come over. So I didn't have the money. And that's why I said God works with me. The next day, and I was speaking to Estelle at the time. She was doing that transition as well. Okay. The next day, um, my mom come and dashed the envelope in my lap. I bust it. It was my mm. first Dizzy Rascal check yeah. for my royalty. That's when I learned royalties. Yeah, that's I was nice. like, this is all right. I it was went a nice check. Yeah. <laughs> I went straight <laughs> nice. to the cash place. I cashed it. Mm. And um, I took a plane to America. Mm. And that's how I ended up in Jamaica, Queens. Yeah, that's mm. mad. How, so, was, how was over there? Well, America showed me different, man. I mean, like, obviously, we knew Black Hand over there. I think um, yes. a couple people. That's um, Graf. Graf. Yeah, Graf. Yeah, Graf. yeah, he was certified. Big up Graf. So, yeah, I was in his block. I was in Merritt Boulevard. And it was just cool. Like, America get it. Obviously, they've had a lot of more experience than mm. us. So they're talking to me. They're letting me know. I had sessions with DR period. I had sessions, a lot of sessions with Estelle when she was just, you know. So mm, she was bringing everybody to the studio. Fat mm. Joe, everybody okay. was in the studio. Mm. And I was learning a lot of them. I mean, when I came in, it was like an English festival room mm. in, in Estelle's studio. I, I really came in strong. I came in with the Timberlands. I came in with the, you know, I came with a couple goons. They was like, rah, you kind of like your hair. But what they didn't understand is Jamaica have this strong New York collection. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Indeed. We got that connection. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So anywhere you go, a yard there. Where? Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. No, you said you, you, you had the Tims on and everything. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing the Scarface jacket, do rag. I took the dollar van over there. Mm. So normally, dollar van is like a. What's that? Like a bus? Like a really downgrade bus. It's mm. a ghetto bus. You say they don't ride that out there. Yeah, you don't ride that. No, no, no one from the hood rides a dollar bus. It's wow. It's. it's <laughs> <laughs> it's really down you're really suffering and yeah. I was eating chicken back over there and just chilling I was going like I was in the yard yeah, yeah. and just doing it back again so you know I had the family over there I had the power and the strength so I just went there with my cousins man and we came in the studio and they saw Estelle and they saw the vibe and it was just mm. good and that kind of brought me back right this can work again you know what I'm saying music mm. and all the stuff so was you making music out, out there yeah I made music me and Estelle recorded mm. She, I mean she had a studio on tab mm. I, I swear it was a um, Where's Tupac got shot? One of those big studios. I forgot what it was called. I, I got rem- I got the woman's number, but it was there. Um, she just had it on tab. Like mm. engineers coming mm. in and out. Mm. You know, artists, rappers, big rappers as well. Mm. And that's when you saw. And then obviously America gave me that vibe. And then I came back to England. I'd done some marketing, branding, learned some other things, and mm. just you know, house. Now I got you know, kind of label deal with Defected. Mm. So I've delivered my first tune, which is Rock the Mic. That's done really well. Okay, okay congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's done really well. And um, just now on my second tune, and just writing for others, and now getting more into writing for others, because I think what missing from UK is the big singles that go worldwide. There's big singles, mm. but, uh, you know, I want to break the world now. I don't, don't want to call this this UK thing. Mm. I want it to go global. Mm, global. So that's where I am So to cut you, so you got a tune on Analyze This. Called Cowboy Films, one of the biggest songs on that album. Blessed, my brother, my guy. How was it working with? I think he's Cardinal, Cardinal official. How was it working with other artists from overseas? Guy, yeah, yeah, from, from, early, Car- yeah from early. He's been around from early. Cardinal was a dope guy, man. Cardinal. We just met, like, and it just kicked off, and we realized obviously he's a Jamaican, mm, so Canada yeah, 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 is yeah, England. Yeah, they got enough, yeah, they That's got why Drake knows it. Drake okay. used to listen to all the albums. Drake okay. probably knows everybody's stuff. Okay. What do you mean? Out here. He was a fan. Yeah, I mean, he was a fan. Do you yeah. know why you're right? Yeah, you remember um, when we had that international collaboration from a long time? The guy from Canada hit yeah. man up, but mm. we just we never sent it back. I don't know what happened, but. Artists were holding him from Canada from a long time ago, like before all this Drake stuff, bro. I'm telling you. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. They got a big Jamaican community out there and um, they understand it, innit? So it's, it's, our, it's our people, them. When when Cardinal came out here, you know, Simtex, DJ, big up DJ Is that Simtex. where Cardinal's from? Canada? Canada, yeah. yeah. Okay. T-Dap, okay. Toronto. Okay. okay. He, he, he mm. came out here and a, a, a guy just showed him, this is the guy to be on the track. 
um, Cardinal Simtex hooked it up and then Cardinal they said do you like Cardinal I said yeah man I'm listening to all these tracks do you want that feature because that has to come out the album money innit mm. so you got this album you're thinking about features and mm. that made sense for a feature mm. same mm. kind mm. of mm. Um, territory same mm. kind of person mm. same kind of Jamaican same descent. kind of background same but you're, kind just, of background. you're in England he's in Canada it made, right. it, it, it made sense it made sense yeah. so the video looked mad together. fun though bro really good <laughs> Number five, Cavendish Square, that was filmed in. Okay. Samuel Jackson was there that day as well. Yes. Yeah. That's major, man. Oh, that's major. <laughs> the guy who done the hostess for it, he said, I can't come upstairs, I've got somebody to meet you, me mm. and Dizzy. Mm. And it came, Samuel Jackson just sitting there normally having a dinner. Mm. Oh, you shooting a video, right? Mm. As me, yeah, you can come downstairs mm. if you want. Any originally from here? I don't know, you know. Is he? I'm sure no, he is. No, I don't think he Campbell. is. Campbellwell, yes. Oh, right. is he? Yes, wow. yes, Campbellwell. No, this, wow. is, this is facts. Is he really? Campbellwell. That's I'm crazy. Google. <laughs> a lot of people are British. A lot of people, man. A lot of people. A lot of people, Slick man. Rick, the yes. best rapper ever, is yeah. British. Yeah. Even Buster has spent time here. Yeah, yeah. Buster knows here yeah. as well. They, they, I found they, out they, the first ever man who played Shaft. He's originally that, that that actor. He's originally from England. Do you know what? Moni Love. Moni Love, yeah. I've been so bad. I was even meant to do it before he even got into it. But yeah. Let's send our um, condolences to yes, um, DMX. Yes, 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 condolences. I'm saying that. I don't know if you've heard. Has he gone? He no, he hasn't gone. He's in the States. Yeah. He's in the States. Yo, yeah. big up DMX. He's yeah. brain dead, but he's yeah. supposed to be uh, awake, awake now, now yeah. breathing and stuff. But yeah, let's, he's a goat, man. Mm. Legend, man. Legend. I've seen, I seen him live perform, and that's the best person Wait. I've seen perform ever was X, the dog. Nah, I ain't seen no one do it like X. Legend. you got you got to speak about that now. Yeah. Because I've never got that. Chance to you. That was crazy. He was out, no hype, man. One up, jumping on the stage, growling like a dog, sounded yeah, no, just like on, the man. CD. Come on, That's man. the best. The energy was just crazy. Stratford Rex in East London. Ooh, that, yeah, that, it, was, it, it, was, it was crazy, <laughs> bro, man. So yeah, X, let's get well on it, man. Get well soon, on, man. man. God Did, willing. Didn't 50 say, I would rap X, but that's a waste of time. Because I mean, <laughs> he was like that. Because I've seen him walk from, yeah. with a toy plane from there to Mobiles or something, from his hotel room to Mobiles. He's Who? walked. X? Yeah, DMX. Yeah. He's, he's a different type of guy. It's, it's, it's the drugs, and that's the next yeah. thing, man. Children, we have to, like, stay away from drugs, innit? Like, Respectfully. Like, it's, 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 Respectfully. Especially the hard drugs, you know, like, we need to stay away from that. Like, because, look, we got we got legends like DMX, he's supposed to have overdosed on, I don't know what you can overdose on, so I don't think it's crack, so it must be heroin or something like that. So, yeah, we need to just um, be mindful of what we're taking and, that people even look up to us like we, I looked up to EXO to see him like that and he's doing those things it's heartbreaking so yeah we have Absolutely to know what we're is. doing out here man because there's people watching 100% man 100% you know DMX you know yeah now yeah, we're in an yeah. era of drugs and music really it's turned really nuts right now it's chemical I remember baby when, season I remember it. when the rappers used to be the, the you know the sellers now they're the users <laughs> so you got Kiki here with you what, yes. is, what does Kiki do? Kiki's a rapper, man, but it's even better if she speaks. <laughs> it's even better so, if she speaks. So what, what you are you working on? Uh, so Kiki, yourself. nice to meet you guys. I'm nice Kiki Riches. I'm an up-and-coming artist. Um, I picked up my pen at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things I've got a lot to say. Okay. And uh, the industry's going a bit one-tracked at the moment, so we need to show the younger generation that there's mm. more out there. Mm. So, um, yeah, just all I can say is uh, follow up the Instagram, kiki.riches, okay. and uh, keep keep your ear to the phone to see what's coming to the streets. Yeah, no, definitely. We're going to definitely be posted and look into that. Definitely, man. Definitely. 100, 100. I appreciate the support. So have you recorded any tracks or anything like that? I have. I've got a little... Uh, a little EP coming up soon. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be interesting. And we're just incorporating new styles. We're trying to bring back the old, the old style, like the boom back rap. You <laughs> What's know? the old okay. style? The boom back rap. Okay. Because you know what I mean? Like, because everything called this drill and trap is a great genre, but mm. there's more to life than the road there's more. There's more to rap, yeah. 100%. Exactly. 100%. So, you know, we're going to bring that forward and it's... um. It's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. We're in, we're in troubling times at the moment. So to find yourself yeah. and be able to express yourself in a way that people can relate mm. and it gives them inspiration to do better, mm. that's what I'm here for. That's that's dope. The, that's dope. That's that's what we're all here, all here for. I think most artists should be here for that because that's what See, it yeah. is when we pick up the pen. Like like even the artists that I used to listen to back in the day, that's what they done for me. They inspired, they inspired me. So I think it's good that other artists should do the same. 
the female rappers as well. Definitely. Can we shout out all the female rappers no, and all to, the young ladies to, out there? To. Pick up your pens. Don't let these man them make you feel <laughs> like you can't do what they do because when you get it and you get it right, you'll yeah. be doing it ten times better than they could ever do it. Hey, Kiki. This is what it is. You believe I'm, that, Kiki? Yeah? I know some. I know some. I know some. <laughs> I, I, I listen, I listen to some, some women yeah. rappers, some UK female rappers that will spin a lot of these. One hundred. Right One hundred. It's their time. Yeah. yeah I've been some, saying it. No, yeah, we've been saying it. <laughs> We, yeah. Like literally, we've been in the studio. We've, we've, we've been watching all these young artists and young female artists, and even the old school ones as well. We're like, yeah, no, nah, it's their time. They're 100%, about to. Like, 100%. The, the way how they structure their thing is different. Mm-hmm. Than, but yeah. they've got one up on the man and for marketing. There's a lot now, but women are extra in it, so <sighs> they're, they're going to want extra stuff. That's just that's the same. So, so it's, 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 it's always going to look extra. Quick disclaimer, he meant it in a very good way. Quick disclaimer. Like, uh, yeah. I'm trying to help it's you out. Like if, you're, if, it's like if you was managing a, um, a guy artist, he's just a hoodie, tracksuit, but with a girl, you're going to have to get her hair done, this, that, that, that So it's, it's, it's but extra. But hold on, it's that's more. what keeps you lot tuned in, though. That's what you lot want to see. But it's extra. It's extra work. He's watching the cuss. He's watching the cuss. He's watching the cuss. Extra in a good way. In a good way. Quick disclaimer. So you gotta be dope, definitely to you know get the extra, 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 extra. Uh, get, it's it's yeah. even more in it when it's a woman, like, yeah. it? and she's the she's the queen in it when she's a girl. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. You, know you might have to bring a makeup, a stylist on yeah. the road. Yeah. All yeah. of these things that. cost. All of that. Yeah. All of that. See, he's watching the. He's All a businessman. That, That's yeah. how you know. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. That's how he sees. All of that, but yeah, so, so what's the relationship with Taz? Well, we're working on a lot of music together at the okay, moment. Okay, okay. You know, God opens doors for people when you're doing the right thing for yourself. Of course. True. So, you know, who better than to work with mm. someone that started <laughs> off the whole the whole train on the tracks with this thing. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and for him to show that he's willing to invest time into female rappers as well now, yeah. just kind of gives everyone a new breath of fresh air when it comes to this music. And up and coming artists, you're up and coming artists. So yeah, that's, up and that's, on my way. That's, that's a good look. Most artists, remember, we're artists, isn't it? we got super egos, man. So to take time and go, yeah, let me work with you and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I got to commend Taz for that. That's a good big thing. Big ups, big ups. Yeah, man, I, I saw the market within the women, you know. I'm working with a lot of females, man. I saw the market within the... As, you, as Jabba said, you know, the women are coming harder than the guys. Hey, listen, it's true. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> I don't know about all of that. This is free smoke. This is free smoke. This is free smoke. And I cannot let my guys down. We know what we're doing. No, no, no. We we appreciate what the women are doing. The game is a full circle. We need everybody in it. Everybody. Wait, Mill. Respectfully. Mill. Respectfully. Respectfully. Quick disclaimer. Respectfully. Yeah. But I'm going to keep it real. There is some of them that when they are on songs and you hear their verses... You're thinking, wow. But come on, you know, it's more than a verse. I need to hear a whole project. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It's more than a verse. I always say that about artists. It's easy. Like, say if someone's like, I've created the whole track, it's easy for you to just come and write your verse and kill shit because it's been late. It's been set up for you. But if you created that, would it be the same? Like, if I come now and go, what I'm trying to say is they, they are doing that. They are creating that for themselves. Yeah, no, So that's why they're good. And when they are doing it, it's like, hold on. We're just getting, the, as she said, there's one sound, one sound, one sound yeah. from the man them. Well, some of them are the man them, but the gallon one, switch no, it up, no, and they're doing it. their we thing. Need we, all. Do, we need it all. We need it all. I'm not a hater of no But then I was rappers. trying to we save you when you was talking about extra. Like, quick <laughs> yeah. disclaimer. Free smoke, we love the women over there. Yeah, yeah, we, we got love the women them. them. Get, I listen, salute. Yeah, Definitely. We need you lot. So, Definitely. Yeah. So what are you doing now, Taz? Well, now I've built my own business. We're based in Oval Business Center. So this is alternative content. Okay. We put alternative content. Yeah, alternative up, content. We're coming. We put music on video games. Mm. We're developing artists, obviously, working with artists. Sorry to cut you, how did you for those who don't know, you do so soundtracks for video games. How do you get into that? Oh so every year I go to LA, E3. Um, okay. Ubisoft, big up Mr. Midas, the big gamer. Big up, My bridge and Mr. Midas. I don't even know, but big up, man. Yeah, big yeah, up, but yeah. You know, Mr. Midas, if you see him, you go, bro, Mr. Yeah. He runs the gaming thing. Like, Where's he on YouTube and that? Yeah, YouTube. Nah, I, I, really, I ain't really still, a game, I, I just play And he's from yeah. South London, though. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's from Ends, man. Okay, went primary I might know school, his face and yeah, that. Yeah, you know his face. Yeah. So he's got a show and he does he does the gaming thing. But anyway, what happened with Ubisoft? They hit me up about the Trials and Fusion game, and I ended up putting music. On there, obviously, if you know some of my career, I've had music in. Um, obviously, it's Dizzy Rascal, so you know we've had music in Kid Adulthood, 
Step Brothers mm. movies, mm. Um, tons of movies, Match of the Day. Mm. At one time, I was yeah, Match of the Day man. themes music. That just made me know, oh, I don't have to be popular to get money from music. Sinks, and I can do other things to get money. And I just started to just look into those avenues and it was fun and I enjoyed it as well as I'm a voiceover artist as well. So okay. it, I just enjoyed it. So I just brought all those passions together and I've done Soho, Soho Voices. Soho Voices, come yeah. Come on, man. Come yeah, on, big I up my agent. Research. Get come me on, a lot of work. On. So alternative content's your thing. My your, thing your, okay. and my partners. Big up Robin and Mark. Big up. You know, my partners are... And we're way different from each other. Mm. Like, I'm kind of the street edgy guy. Mm. They're, they're like... <laughs> corporate mm. giants mm. and you know Marx he used to run Top of the Pops he was the mm. head of Top of the Pops okay. and then Robin's a, a business juggernaut kind of and we've all come together and we've built this thing alternative yeah, no, concept that's good you need so, all types of people to make a miracle country, when you, when you do, come do. on can't Not just one be, person yeah, can, all types know. of people to make a miracle that's what we uh, say man that's 100%. it 100% <laughs> a lot of people like to think that there's only one person that built the ship 100 yeah, um, so many and we're going to have voiceover agency there. We're going to build it. I don't... I was hiding from the record label, but as, as you know, how much money it costs. Mm. So what I was going to do, when the records come, if it's a hit, mm. I'll pipeline it into a record label. I'm very kind of clever mm. with it. Because mm. okay, record you know. labels for me are costs. Mm. Yeah. But mm. I, I, it's coming. It's, mm. I'm feeling more music. And you and can make a lot of money independent now anyway. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. It's, but it's just like the sync market and that and the voiceover. Because you know what with that, why I like it so much? Obviously, features, you get paid for. It's so much money broken down by the time a record comes out. With that, the voiceover world and the sync, it's just straight to the point. Mm. We want to pay you 50K for that record for mm. one minute, two minutes. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or we want you to do that voiceover. It's three fifty an hour. Mm, I like your style, man. You're getting money <laughs> in the <laughs> back, bro, man. Easy. I like your style, You remind man. me of this one over there across from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like it this style, man. Don't play with getting money in the yeah, back, yeah, bro. Yeah, it'll it'll play with it, man. Yeah, yeah, it'll be dangerous. Yeah, dangerous, like it, man. Hey, listen. No way, man. I'm cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Business-wise, dangerous. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, you start to learn, innit? it? And it, it just ain't about being popular. It's about making sure that you can feed yourself. You know, there's people with number one sleeping on sofas. Facts. Yeah, that's that's facts. the music industry. Yeah, I don't know is. what music industry people are seeing, but mm. I know, you know, there's people with big records that are just homeless and they can't even pay their phone bill. You would be shocked. So we want to make sure that we don't have popularity with no money. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the... Yo, I've learned that. That is the worst of mm, sin no, to have, you know. That's You're talk, popular. Man. Yo, Taz, where are mm. But, you, you, you know, times are hard. You can't even buy your daughter a... A sneakers or things like that. A wise man used to say to me, yeah, and it's my philosophy as well. <laughs> like, like, what is it? Yeah, forget the praise. I want the raise. A hundred. Yeah, that's what it yeah, is, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you forget the praise. I want the raise, man. Facts. That's why street niggas got so popular in this. When I started to see street niggas in the music industry, I said, "Thank God," because it started to become more. We've had that money already. You mm. got to offer us something big. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it yeah. kind of raised my bar because a lot of guys wasn't from the street. I mean, a lot of rappers in my time used to say they're from the streets, but mm. they wasn't really from. It just used from to be a suburbs. cool. Yeah, mm. it used mm. to be a cool thing mm. to say. But when mm. street, real street mm. guys, I think they change the narrative in this where's UK music at now it's at a good time I'm hearing songs you know I think African music changed mm. UK mm. it changed its UK thing because for an extent it, yeah, yeah to an extent definitely the hits part yeah. remember I mean the, the, the yeah. hits part it's coming from there yeah because you yeah. hear the hits worldwide Afro, Afro beats million yeah. Percent. Yeah, yeah you million don't percent. just hear them in the UK yeah. no, and, million percent. Uh, and it's not just from one place in Africa remember probably the first time ever while he's been played in America well it's not the first time but popularity like when I talk about being played that see some people say oh you're breaking America you're not breaking America because your average street guy doesn't listen to a UK rapper Mm. Okay, now nah, that's whack. Mm. We're not into that. So America's still wide open. But when you go to the club and you hear Bolsi, Bolsi, mm. Bo yeah. if that's because all cultures mm. are mixing together and they've got mm. a strong that's African right. culture mm. in New Facts. York now. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So you hear it normal. Yeah. That's why I called when you've breaking. So do you think that a UK rapper has breaking? Oh, I have this argument with May, those people, and everybody. <laughs> breaking the US market. Slick Rick. Of course, <laughs> man. But, 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 no, man. But, we're, talking, we're talking about anybody but, else other but, than. But, but would he Rick. consider himself a UK artist? We'd have to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, you know, that'd be a good interview. Uh, 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 free smoke, uh, uh, slick, uh, uh, Rick. I'm, I'm just trying to manifest it. Uh, uh, I'm talking about what you see now. 
No, he had before. Con- oh yeah, what I'm seeing now. Obviously, I'm going to New York like every before this pandemic. I was there every seven weeks. And what I'm seeing now is they finessed the game. What they did was instead of using the UK rappers, they used the UK rhythms. Yeah, okay. the drill the and drill, put Pop yeah. Smoke yeah. on it. Yeah. Respectfully, RIP yeah. Pop Smoke. R. R. And they put their U- US rappers there. But are they feeling UK rappers? I think they do, but they don't show it as much. It's not playing in the club. Except for when it's got African content. Okay. Mm. The African content with Burner Boy creating the links and I think those kind of things, yes, mm. I hear it. But do they say, oh, yeah, I'm on the street and I'm listening to this UK? No. Mm. You know, in the hood, they don't listen to mm. UK rappers. They're not interested. They're mm. interested in their thing. Mm. And obviously, America is different. It's got a gang language. Mm. When you're in Harlem, it's more gang. It's more, mm. you know what I'm saying, their, their thing. But no, they're not listening. It can happen. Uh, I, I have arguments with, you know, US rappers all the time. How do you break a UK artist in mm. America? Mm. I don't know. So do they fuck with you out there? Yeah, with the Jamaican tip. That's what. That's, yeah, that's what, what that is. is. Yeah, and I'm mm. a writer. I'm mm. a writer. It's not just a rapper. Like they, they mm. mess with me. They show me love. You mm. know, I get love, especially when you get on Jamaican tip. You see Bobby Smurden. I don't have to link Bobby Smurden all these people by industry people. I just go to the Jamaican shop. Your uncle, more I link Bobby, you know. Yeah, man, mm. done. Mm. And that, they they dealing with street people on, over the there. Vibe. You know what I'm that's saying? That's, that's how vibe. America is. They deal mm. with, and uh, you know, the rappers are more humble. They're cool. I mean, it's not saying they're more humble. They they've had a long lasting pipeline of money. Mm. They're used to it because mm. you can tell when somebody's comfortable with what they do, then they're not comfortable. You understand? Mm-hmm. It's like obviously it's a new thing to the UK. So I gotta understand that some people are excited. They won't answer your call. They'll be not respect, like not disrespectful, but yeah, I don't want to know you because mm. I'm get it's new to them. Mm. In America, they've had pipelines of money for years. So somebody in America just says, "Yeah, man, I'll link you with Little Wayne." It's nothing, mm. and you go, "Sure." Mm. When you go to the studio, you see Little Wayne, Wayne, some little man. Mm. It's girls mm. that bring mm. you in. Girls mm. say, "Yo, I know Santana." Mm. I say, oh, you don't know. And they go, mm. nah, man, come, mm. man. My brother's brother. Mm. Yo. And then mm. that's how New York is. And that's mm. how I found America. And that's how it's getting here. Yeah, it's getting here. <laughs> so I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, getting it's, new. it's who new. you know in it. Yeah. It's yeah. not yeah. what yeah. you know. No, it's, it's who you know it's in this music game. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So to ask you this, Taz, if you could, you've worked with UK and US rappers and other artists. If you could go back, which artist would you work with? He's not here now, Jackson, and it? Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's dope, man. I, 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 used, to, I used to be dancing like listening? that guy, Yo. so I can't no. even knock it. You wouldn't believe that I had hair back in the day. And I did. But I really had the Michael Jackson shoes. <laughs> yeah. You see me and Walker. Yeah, that was my ish. Come on. You see me and Walker. I used to put my siblings he through hell watching shit, that. Bro. Who didn't have shit like this? We all these days I'm gonna throw up the baby picture. I don't know how he was moonwalking. I don't know how he was moonwalking. That must have been crazy. crazy. Like, I'm one of the coldest right now. Don't play with me. That must have been been like a well, a well moonwalking. This is skeletal. Skeletal. Do you really want to go there today? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to go nowhere. Earth, where the gym? Do you really want to go there today? I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to go nowhere. That's not my name. Big Baby Reaper, you know. The girl them love me, you know. Yo, you know, you know. The girl them sugar, the girl them goo close, you know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> have some manners when you talk on my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ain't gonna say it no more. <laughs> no more. We finish and we done. <laughs> we done. We done for now. We done for now. I know. I know. But yeah, man, it's been, it's been, it's been. I swear, time's running yeah, on, man. Trust me, yeah, man. time's I'm running. Man. But yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a pleasure having you, Taz, man. Thank you as well, man. Definitely, man. Come on, man. We just wish you a lot more progression, more life, more wealth, more health, man. Even with your um, new EP as just well, me, and um, your ventures, what you're doing Alternative as well. Alternative content, yeah, man. Um, we'll, do, we'll do it. Be doing a lot of work together, man. And oh, big yeah, up free man. smoke. On, this free is the smoke, dopest thing. Smoke. There yeah. was champagne. There was herbs if you need it. <laughs> yeah. There was, you know, there was shots. We were dealing with shots. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that's what made <laughs> you talk. Speaking to you're spoken to. That's what you got to remember. Manners in this game as well. Okay. Always humble yourself oh, and always, find your manners. Man. Because man. this big Works girl attitude, ways. this big boy attitude, is not going to yeah. get you nowhere. It's going to get you five minutes of fame. From the cleaner to the CEO, same respect. Trust Stay me. respect and keep it every time. Keep it every time. Respectfully. Not to burn bridges and all these sort of things, there, man. That's crazy. Man. Unless you know you're not going back over that way, you yeah. got a boat to sail across if you need yeah. to get back. Keep them bridges Perhaps. there. Keep everyone sweet. That's what it is. That's what it is.
Come on, man. And on that note, episode three is done. Big up Taz, big up yeah. Kiki, man. I know. Free That's I know. smoke, free smoke. That's the so the gen. As it goes. I'm Big Jabba, <laughs> the people them's champ. Never self pro came, the people them gave me that name. Free smoke, free smoke. Free, free smoke, free smoke. Like free and smoke, subscribe. Free smoke. Yeah. Come on now. Please <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Check them out on YouTube. Check them out on Instagram. Check them out on Snapchat. Come on. Free smoke, free smoke, free smoke. Come Type on. it in and find it. Come on. Are you Come mean? on. Oi, oi. To the world. <laughs> to Kiki the world. got us, man. Kiki hey, got hey, us. We're going to have to do that as a jingle. Are you mean? Hey, hey, where's, where's, the, where's the Prime Minister? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them straight, I'm talking things. Tell them straight, I'm talking things. We screaming out, free smoke, we giving out.